In March of this year, I took the opportunity of sitting down with my brothers. I have two, Mark and Michael. Growing up, I never really um, had a lot to do with my youngest brother, Michael. He was adopted out when he was younger. Um, and I used to go and see him on a you know, semi-regular basis. It wasn't really until maybe the last eight or nine years that I've really been in touch with Michael a lot. Um, and Mark joined the army when he was 18 and we had some good times as two youngsters just kicking around home and doing lots of things. And I missed this little bugger uh, for, for, you know, good 25 years and um, sat down and uh, had a bit of a chat to Mark also with his life. Here's a little bit of the story. Through these fields of destruction Baptisms of fire I've witnessed your suffering As the battle reached time Supermarket always called Brains. Were you? Yeah. And then I had a nickname of Moose. What was your first job? Uh, working at the supermarket. And, and whereabouts and was that? At Woolworths and Hornby. And how long did you work there for? Oh, quite a while because I went full time after school. So, <laughs> <laughs> what was your favourite subject at school? Maths. And why did you like that? Because I've always been good at maths. Love maths. Still like it today. Did you ever play sport? Yes. What was it? Rugby, cricket, shitloads. In the military, I played all every kind of sport you could play. What is your greatest achievement in life? Um, my family, my children, my loving wife. <laughs> do you have a? <laughs> do you have? Do you, you had you... to say that, didn't he? He did. I was right here. <laughs> 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 Do you have a bucket list and what are you yet to achieve off oh, yeah, that list? I'm going to show you my bucket list. Yeah, hang on, just a minute. <laughs> go on. Uh, going to Bedham, getting the boat over, going on the Wellington to Auckland Ex Express, then flying home and doing the same thing two or three times. What was the most valued lesson in life you've learned so far? Delete your porn history. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, you lisa of that, didn't uh, you? Old jug world. <laughs> what is the most valued lesson you've learned in life? <laughs> Sit by his granddaddy. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most valued lesson in life? Uh, don't end up like those two. Um, you know, Michael, over the over the years, to me, in the 70s and 80s growing up, I always knew we had a brother called Michael. And it was a bit of an elephant in the room, to be honest. There were so many questions that I had in the last four or five years since being here in Auckland. You know, you're now my best mate, and um, can't ask better than that. When you look back on your life now, you're in your mid-40s, what what are you what are your views around you know when did you find out that you had all these brothers and sisters and that in effect you were adopted well um i always knew that it was a foster child <clears throat> from sort of age three really because um i have a lot of early memories of going back on a saturday to dad's and uh playing with you and um little mary and i use the word little mary because i have a older sister Mary as well but little Mary and I used to go back to, to dad's on a Saturday and play and uh, I can remember having fish and chips which was sort of like seagulls at the beach really it's absolutely mad it's probably my earliest memory and um, but I always knew that I had brothers and sisters McCarthy brothers and sisters because I was always Michael McCarthy until I was adopted in 1984 um, I was Michael Francis McCarthy and um, I just lived at a different house, but I was never not, and still to this day, was never not <clears> a McCarthy. Um, you've you've, you've um, really made a lot of attempts at reconnecting with your siblings, particularly in the last 10 years, it's fair to say. Do you, why is that important to you, and, and where do you see the connection with your siblings from, um, from your birth siblings, that is? Um, I think it's been super important to make good reconnections with all my um, natural family, if you don't mind me using that word. Um, and I've still got a lot of work to do on that. Um, because I, it's, it's, I've never really been asked that question before, Steve, so it's hard for me to sort of answer that. But. Um, I live with all of my brothers and sisters like they're my own because they are and I want to find out about them and share my stories and share my life and share the children's lives with them because <coughs> you know um, whilst I was incredibly lucky to be with Pam and Graham um, sometimes there's that hollow gap in the first few years of my life there's I know that sounds ridiculous spoiled brat Michael with all the toys and the Legos and everything else um, but there were some things I didn't get I didn't get to beat up or be beaten up by my brothers and sisters I didn't get to swear like a trooper or as a teenager and anything like that I didn't get the freedoms that perhaps you and some of the siblings might have enjoyed but also not enjoyed I, I, know, I don't know if I'm making any sense as well um, what do you think of the McCarthy family as it is today? Ah, oh, I'm super proud of, super proud of everybody. Why? Because I had 20 years of privilege, 20 years of privilege, education that um, you guys didn't get the same opportunity as, and to see you guys in the position <clears throat> of. Um, where you are all at now. It's just tremendous. And you did it all on your own. You did it a lot harder than I did. And um... <laughs> When you think about your life so far, what were some of the significant events that has shaped your life? Oh, yes, actually. January the 19th, 2013, Basin Reserve. When Brendan McCullen hit the uh, the one run he needed to go from 299 uh, into the boundary uh, for four to bring him up to 303 runs, that was a defining moment in my life. Well, Steve, uh, you've had the opportunity to 
interview the siblings and the family so I thought I'd just take a couple of minutes to ask you a couple of questions so Steve tell me some of the earliest memories you have of uh, growing up for some reason the the earliest memory I have growing up is when I was I think less than five and it was in Henderson's Road in Hoonhei um, and I remember most of my siblings being around at that time um, it was somewhat chaotic we had some stuff out the back to play with and that's pretty much what I remember I more remember moving to Dixon Crescent and Sockburn at the time and my school days and and knowing that there were uh, some teachers that started to have a positive influence on my life in terms of sort of like you know we, we really didn't have a lot other than each other in our house and um, things were uh, were a bit tough and you gravitate towards people so Mrs Smith probably is the teacher of my choice in my life that really put me on the right straight and narrow. What was your, do you have a single most happiest memory with all the family together? I, I've really liked some of the, look it's the saddest but happiest at the same time memory that sticks with me probably one of the earlier ones and that is when Nana Dad's mum passed away in 1991 and we were celebrating her life and it turned into a bit of a food fight uh, at the wake and so that's sort of a happy and, and, a, and a not a happy time and the next ones were very much everyone's weddings that I had the privilege as a brother to go to. You know, um, Michael's wedding, the church, uh, you know, both weddings I've been to and um, and it was just a privilege to be in those. Mark's and Trentham to Chris and Julie's wedding was probably the first wedding I'd ever attended in my life actually. And then Emma's wedding to Graham and, um, you know, Karen's wedding as well, which was, um, you know, a special moment in everyone's lives. Um, and then Mary's wedding up in the Cashmere Hills and obviously Caitlin's wedding to come into the future and they're, they're happy times for me, celebrations. Even Mary's 40th actually was a really cool celebration. Uh, I have some good memories of that too. So a lot of my memories are probably more post the age of 20. What was the most embarrassing moment of your life? Uh, I've had several. Uh, I had to make it all the way back from Marimataka Tabin back to my house in Hillside Drive back in 2004. It was actually dripping out of the back of my shorts <laughs> and it got to the point by the time I got home that it was all over the concrete and I had to wash it down. You, can, you, you don't want to relive that moment. But it all goes down the hole eventually with your toe. <sighs> What's your most embarrassing moment? Uh, oh, can I just have one more? My most embarrassing moment was for the last two <clears throat> years believing that the Warriors were going to win. They won last night? No, the NRL Championship I'm talking about. Oh, well, that's never going to happen. That's It's going to happen you. this year, mate. No, it won't. Yes, it will. In your dreams. You heard it here f first from me, Moose. I'm You're a father of five now. Yes. And you have a beautiful wife in terms of young ting. <clears throat> your um, wishes for them in the future? To be happy and to be happy inside and outside and I know it sounds weird but you have to be happy on the inside and happiness is only real when it is shared. And the McCarthy brothers and sisters Yep in terms of your own children, what relationship do you want for your children to have in the future with our siblings? Exactly the same as your children, Steve, or exactly the same as Emma's children, or exactly the same as Julie's children, and Mark's, and Mary's, and Caitlin's in the future, and Karen's, you know? Because we're all one big family. Um, you know, I have Felix and Nico that are not my own natural children, it doesn't mean anything to me. Absolutely nothing. Blood means nothing. And I'll say that to the camera. Because 
it's how you're treated and how you're loved and how you were made to feel part of a family. Just as the McCarthy's made me feel part of their family from day one to day 43. Sorry, year 43. You know, I never not felt a brother or sister or a son of you guys. Not at all. Look, um, everybody lives the life the way they want to live. So, just enjoy it while you can. Uh, there's no right or wrong answers for people. Mm. What works for some doesn't work for others. So I think a question that most of your siblings would like to ask you, what, what is it into the future from here on? What, what would you like from your siblings in terms of their interaction with you? What, what would make you most happiest about that? <coughs> I feel like every time we've ever got together, uh, that all I ever hear is how great everybody is with their lives and their kids and all that sort of stuff. And I wasn't interested in listening to people go on about how great all of their lives are and how better this and that. And they've all turned out exactly the same as, as everybody else in, in, in life. Me included. We're no, we're no special as a family than anybody else. We were lucky as kids, to be fair. We were given nothing, and we, I think as a whole, we've probably all achieved more than most people. Size as family back in the day. What, what do you, what, what do you, in terms of the perceived or actual successes of your brothers and sisters? What, what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, well, what do you judge success on? <laughs> Owning a home, kids that grow up, you know. I don't, I don't know. Everybody's different. I mean, if you can, if you can have fun with your children even when they're adults, it's the best thing you could ever do. Then that's all you want in life, isn't it? Oh, right? yeah. Shit about the houses. Yeah. Eventually, right. our kids mm. will, will get their own home. That's the yep. plan. Yeah. And um, yeah. But if you can't communicate with your siblings, with your children, siblings is different. I mean, I went off to a different path. All right, and mm. so. I didn't alienate myself from people, but it was I just I was just interested in getting on with my own life. People perceived that as being that, that I'm a prick. But I think the last one is, is the last point is is that um, we came from a we came from an upbringing that um, it, it ended up being that we all were quite boisterous, whether we were female or male. Yeah. And um, when you get all seven of us in a room, uh, you have to put hair and protection on. Because nobody is able to finish a sentence. <laughs> nobody gives a shit about everybody else's opinion. They just want to get their own opinion out and don't really want to hear anybody else's. And that's essentially what we're like as, as siblings together. Whether we were 20 or whether we were 40, it still is to this day the same thing. You can't sit down and have a conversation where somebody else's opinion, <laughs> can, you know. Do you think that that's different when we're like one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, yeah it is, yeah. You know, it's not it's not the role of your siblings to give advice to to uh, each to each other. other. You just have to accept what they've got in life. You can help where they want, but it's not. What is the role then? Well, to, in, our to ages, at, in our ages now, to look after your own family and right. do the, it's the best for them. At the end of the day, um, <clears throat> everybody's got their own little skills. But uh, do you it, find our role is to support each other? If it has to be, yeah. Like I, I mean, I, mean, I don't, you know. Every situation is different. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it needed needed that yeah, you know needed to tow a car out in Timaru, I, I could help. But it, it has to work outside of my working hours, otherwise it, it would be a bit hard. Let's <laughs> do it after hours. What's your greatest achievement in your life? Do you think? My greatest achievement. Um. I think you won't know your greatest achievement until your funeral and hear what other people have to say about you. But I'm pretty proud of um, my franchisee of the year win last year, beating several thousand others. I worked hard for that, worked real hard for that because I felt I owed it to so many people, Pam and Graham especially, you know, they gave me the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, I'm also proud that I've taken on uh, Felix and Nikau and enjoy Joseph and Lena and Samantha, all five of them, and 
you know, you just need to sit around the table on a, on a Tuesday night when we're playing Uno or something like that just to see the happiness that's part of being a big family. Uh, it's funny, isn't it? You know, came from a big family and that's all they've ever wanted as well. And I'm sure some of the other siblings will tell you that too. Do you have any regrets in terms of yep. the, you know, the sibling McCarthy side? Yeah, especially as a teenager and in my 20s. Um, I didn't really try and make the connection that I do now. Uh, I guess with modern technology, um, we can really connect easier. But in my 20s and uh, even 30s as such, I was so busy with my own life and time goes so, so quickly. Um, but yeah, but that, would, that would be about it because I, I think try and have the philosophy of no regrets as such because uh, all of my seven siblings are so generous and warm towards me that um, you know I just need to reciprocate that and in the future you know no, no regrets at all. What's your message for your birth father Russell? Um, thank you for making the decision to um, uh, give me an opportunity of a better life. Quite emotional. Why do you get emotional? Oh, it's just, you know, um, I've never been asked that question before, so sometimes things come to the surface, I guess. If you could say anything to your birth mum, what would that be? a message for your siblings anything else my heart's divided in ten pieces you know ten brothers and sisters and you've got a little space in there all the same size no favorites nothing at all like that just uh, tremendously lucky to be able to share my life with you all and uh, I hope that in the future you know, we can get together, whether it be one-on-one, -on -one, the whole lot together and just be ourselves and, um, you know, we don't have to look back. We can tell stories and things like that, but, you know, it doesn't matter whether in our 70s or 80s, just uh, be thankful for what we have then and now and, and, and a good future and, um, you know, Julie a tremendous job putting together the family's history because it's something I want to pass on to my kids and um, you know shit we're all awesome aren't we what's your bucket list uh, three things on my bucket list uh, I've always wanted to uh, enjoy a test cricket match overseas uh, watch the Kiwis play somewhere uh, you know, really any sporting fixture of any match just overseas with the New Zealanders um, number two would be to have a home where I have a bedroom each for all of the kids that is a real dream of mine but number one on my bucket list is to see the northern lights I want to travel to Lapland um, and see the aurora borealis that's something I want to do before I uh, kick the bucket list so to speak <laughs> what was your favorite color green emerald green where's the best place in the world so far you've been to Florence, Italy. What did you most enjoy at school? Drama. What school did you go to? Uh, my first school was Islam School, then I went to Westburn, and then I um, had two tremendous years at a little country school called Diamond Harbour, and then came back to Kirkwood Intermediate, and then had, I oh, was very lucky to spend five years at Christchurch <coughs> Boys High School. What was the best memories that you have relating to Graham Ash, your adopted dad? And how did he shape you 
to the man you are today? Uh, I can't speak highly enough of um, Dad. Um, he really did exactly that, Steve. He shaped me. Uh, came into my life when I was 10. Um, and never had any experience with young children whatsoever, but he was himself. And uh, he taught me how to be a scholar and a gentleman. And those two things are the most two important assets that I think um, I like to think I have. Um, being a gentleman is something I like to show my own children, especially the boys. And scholarship, reading, um, is a super important um, thing to have. And Dad gave me both those in abundance. And he also gave me um, like a best friend. He was a best friend to me. Uh, we did all sorts of naughty things, so to speak, that my mum wouldn't necessarily approve of, such as <laughs> you know, swearing and having a drink together and going to cricket matches and um, you know. And yeah. and what about your mum? If you could wire, you know, say. A message about the value that Pamela Ash has had on you. Uh, Mum is an angel, a true angel. I mean, we meet a lot of people in our lives, um, but there's not many people that actually take two little children, myself and we marry in, and uh, she experienced a hell of a lot of tragedy in her life. And she turned it around and gave life back to Mary and myself. And, you know, she's always in my prayers. And um, my mum also loves the whole of my family. From Russell to Anne to Julie. Julie will always have a special place in mum's heart as well as we Mary. And Emma and Karen and Mark, she thinks tremendously of you. And Caitlin, she wishes you the future um, that I had. And, um, you know, I uh, always was, if you don't mind me saying, grew up thinking that mum was almost, I like to think of my mum as their mum too, Steve. What about your adopted brothers and sisters? I love you all, guys. You're, you're always, as I said before, you're always in my heart. And... Um, we Mary, we were lucky enough to spend a few years, just the two of us together, and we forged a special bond. And I think, though, Steve, you know, with you living in the same city as I in the last few years, and we've shared a lot of um, happiness and sadness, and we've shared all our emotions together, and I think you and I have forged a friendship that will never die and um, you know I think I thank God for that mate because uh, you have now the brother I always wanted except sometimes you're a pain in the ass <laughs> say to you mate, my son, my firstborn, um, and Helena, my firstborn daughter, and Felix and Nika, two special people that are coming to my life, and we Sam, the five of you are tremendous kids, I'm so lucky to have you, and all I want you to be in the future is good, kind people, and if you can have brothers and sisters relationships like we do, then my job is done. Peace out. You know, I suffered a bit of loss a few years back and then Amanda came into my life and, um, you know, um, funny isn't it? She come from China and Shanghai and I come from Christchurch and, and the world has got smaller and the two of us have come together and we forged a really strong relationship and you know you're my rock darling really amazing and you know to share our life together until uh, one of us goes is just a <clears throat> just a real joy 
and always keep funny guys humor you need humor to survive in this world believe me Dating March 2018 and you know Through these fields of destruction Baptisms of fire I've witnessed your suffering As the battle reached high And In the fear and the love 